Yeah, no worries. Uh, this is the first climate finance session for CBA 15, vulnerable uh, in urban areas. So before we begin, super quick housekeeping basics. I think everybody's kind of got the hang of this now. Stay on mute. Uh, background noise can be very distracting for those in the chat. Uh, this is going to be monitored by the Zoom wizard behind the scenes, and hopefully we'll be able to respond to that. Um, any and all reflections are welcome. And as we go through the session, if you could please just think, just try and reflect on, on what you're hearing and how it's applicable to your work. Well understood that the current climate finance system is not really working. Business as usual is not getting the money into the hands of the people who need most. But why is this? Why do we not have a more equitable system in the first place? Well, there's a number of reasons, but one of the reasons is that businesses have donors' incentives and to their risk tolerance. So this puts quite a high burden on the recipients uh, to prove that their interventions are actually going to adhere to the uh, donor funding criteria and, and their uh, fiduciary capability. But for recipients, this, this also poses a risk in, in, in terms of tape. Um, so this, is, this poses a risk in terms of delivering effective outcome, but also in terms of accessing the money quite quickly and being able to learn from. So with, with that in mind, we're going to see if there's a difference. We can do things, and we're going to, and this is, we're going to cite practical examples of how things are actually being done differently. And we're going to hear from KFW, who is the donor, who is and we're going to be hearing from the different partners themselves. And we're looking at the expediency by which money can be accessed and there's red tape and there's bureaucracy. Um, and the idea is here is that we want to have a look at examples on how the way from business as usual and looking at the different avenues for CBA practitioners to engage. Barry, Barry I'm sorry for interruption. So, we are not hearing you properly. I'm going to pass you over to Dr. Rabani. Okay, all right. Uh, I don't know if my internet is terribly stable. I'm just going to pass to you just now anyway. You just... You, you... Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Barry Smith. Uh, this is a great opportunity for us to organize this, um, uh, this session. And um, uh, we cordially welcome all the participants, uh, participants at this session on a better way how climate finance can meet the needs of the vulnerable in urban areas. So this is a great opportunity again to share experiences of Climate Breeze Fund and its partners uh, related to climate uh, challenges and opportunities uh, you know, in this 15th conference of the community-based adaptation. And let me now reflect on um, on, on our experiences um, uh, um, you know, about Climate Breeze Fund in Bangladesh. And the Climate Breeze Fund uh, uh, actually established by BRAC in association with the government of Germany through KFW in 2019. And in fact, we are functional from January 2020 and we have already started our operation. And this is the second year, 2021 is our second year. So if, uh, if we talk about the goal and objective of the Climate Breeze Fund, you know, our goal is to build resilience of the climate vulnerable communities in the urban areas, particularly um, the displaced population, which is, uh, you know, climate migrants and the, and the people who are at the risk of being displaced. So there are two main objectives. The first one is the strengthening resilience by reducing risk of vulnerable people. And the second one is the strengthening institutional capacity. Those uh, NGOs or local, uh, local stakeholders who will be implementing the adaptation actions in the urban areas, you know, should have adequate capacity in the future to address climate change uh, in Bangladesh. So these are the two main 
uh, main objectives of this uh, of this climate based fund and there are five specific locations we have you know from the beginning to work uh, in bangladesh you can see here in this uh, in this slide that there are there are uh, three locations uh, you know in the south which is actually the coastal zone and in the north you can see shirazganj which is very climate prone area and this uh, this this people and this area is exposed to mainly river bank erosion and and the river and flood and the third area is rashai which is uh, you know the uh, the northern uh, urban area and exposed to mainly the drought drought and uh, drought and flood so these are the five locations and in terms of ecosystem zone we are covering you know actually the coastal zone and drought prone zone and flood and river prone zone so from these five locations we are trying to uh, you know um, address the problems of the climate migrants in the in these five urban areas and to give you an update regarding the projects we have already supported uh, you know four projects in 2020 and currently under uh, under two windows you know we have this climate change window and we have emergency response window under climate change window as i mentioned that four projects have been uh, uh, taken uh, into the field and they are on the ground and uh, there are uh, there are other sets of you know four projects are in the process and under emergency response window we have 14 projects um, uh, you know under process and these projects will be uh, on the ground uh, you know uh, by by this month or uh, by next month and seven projects will be implemented by um uh, by different programs of brac and seven projects will be implemented by by ngos so these are um, un, uh, under the process uh, at the moment so in terms of governance of uh, of cbf you know uh, there are three layers you can see from this slide and uh, you know the major stakeholders uh, uh, you know principal organs and implementing partners if you look at the major stakeholders there are two organizations and as i mentioned brac and kfw and brac is basically the legal partner and also the um, uh, the financing agreement um, uh, is the um, 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 is the main role of brac to look at and the settler of the fund and employer of the trust is there are two layers you know um, um, uh, who makes the decisions uh, in the selection of the projects one is the sccf you can see one of the principal organs here advisory committee of the climate bridge fund board of trustees and cbf secretary and in terms of you know um, uh, if you look at uh, look at the role of kfw which actually you know is the development partner who is supporting um, uh, the the cbf we have already received uh, you know 11.735 million euro to support projects under climate change um, uh, climate change window and we have uh, we have 10 million euro um, um, uh, to to support the projects under emergency response window and and they are providing no objection to each of the projects that we select each of the year and they also look at the progress and fiduciary um, you know supervision um, um, of the, of the project so if you look at the board of the trustees in the second layer you know uh, the board of trustees actually the body uh, who actually approve uh, finally approve the projects and the cbf secretary does all administration coordination communication monitoring and the um, uh, monitoring the uh, the projects at the field level and as you can see at the bottom implementing partners which actually implement the projects uh, who are actually uh, you know the uh, the uh, the local uh, ngos and and the stakeholders but there is a uh, there is a serious question how cbf is helping in overcoming the excess challenges of uh, of local actors if you look at the first bullet point it creates actually opportunities for urban adaptation there is a huge debate that the resources are constrained for urban adaptation in not only in bangladesh but across the world and in bangladesh you know, there are number of funds and and there are domestic resources there are bilateral resources and most of the resources actually go to the you know rural areas and uh, and they implement adaptation projects and other disaster risk reduction projects but this is first time in bangladesh and pioneering fund i would say we support actually the ngos to implement adaptation actions in the urban areas vulnerable areas so this is an opportunity for local ngos and my second important point is the uh, you know cbf actually promote local ngos and stakeholders and how you know we have one of the 13 major criteria and the one criteria is 
local NGOs has to, you know, um, has to be engaged uh, in submission of application, which means in each and every project, the local NGOs uh, will be one of the partners. They can lead the projects and also they can be the partner for implementation of the project. So you ensure local level stakeholder engagement in the process. And if you look at the, you know, the sec a third point fostering uh, bottom-up approach through uh, engaging local authorities, we are trying our best, uh, you know, um, uh, to make sure that um, the communities are consulted to design the projects. And at the same time, you know, the local authorities, municipality and, and city corporation mayors or his office staffs are engaged during the design and planning of the project. And of course, you know, it will help to implement the project and also to make sure sustainability of the projects. And regarding concept proposals and, and disbursement of the fund, you can see that we take maximum three to six months. This is our normal process, but uh, one of the major challenges that we are facing now is, uh, you know, the, uh, during the, the corona crisis, we are a bit delayed, but our process is actually to make sure that disbursement go, goes by six months. So this is one of the important points that we are making sure. In other, other parts of the world, in, in other international funds, you can see they take more than one year and these are debated in, uh, in, in, in climate discourses at the domestic level and also at the international level. And we also um, you know, create access to information, orientation on tools, process, and methodologies. What we do in our practice, we try to, you know, have meetings, uh, you know, and exchange with the local NGOs, potential NGOs, so that they can um, um, uh, they can understand better on the tools, application process, and also the um, uh, the templates of the proposal, templates of the con con concept notes, so that they can prepare their proposals nicely. And we, of course, you know, monitor progress and ensure accountability and share our knowledge. So this is how we are trying our best to make sure that the local NGOs have access to climate finance mechanism. I'm not saying this is a, this is a magic mechanism. At least we are, we are trying to ensure that local, uh, local actors have, have access to, uh, to this climate finance mechanism and implement urban adaptation. Thank you so much. I'm done with my, uh, my presentation and this is uh, this is time to uh, to request my colleague from from KFW, Mr. Mehdi Hassan, to uh, to reflect on on several questions. We would uh, would like to hear from him on the donor perspective. Uh, you know, regarding several questions, why have they capitalized this this climate bridge fund, and why do they think this is a strong mechanism for delivering adaptation for urban communities, and also what are the internal decision making trigger points were for them investing here and how their risk appetite may differ for CBM. So may I request Mehdi Hassan to, uh, to take the floor and share your uh, reflection here. Thank you so much, uh, uh, dear uh, Dr. Rabbani. Uh, so as you correctly mentioned that uh, I have given four questions. So I will basically reflect, uh, uh, I mean, I structured my presentation in that way to answer the four questions. So first of all, thank you very much for IIED and also the all organizers of uh, Community-Based Adaptation 15 uh, for giving us the opportunity to share uh, these uh, uh, experiences working uh, on Climate Bridge Fund. So uh, as you can see in the table of content, uh, my I, I have structured the presentation like first introduction and then the four questions, the, the four questions given by the organizers, organizer. So, I mean, for answering properly the questions, like why, why have we uh, capitalized the fund? And then what are the internal decision-making trigger, uh, decision-making trigger points uh, for us to invest? Uh, I think for answering these two questions, I, I need to briefly explain the uh, KFW, German government and German development cooperation mechanism and very briefly about the focus areas in Bangladesh. So if I can do that, then you will automatically get the answer of these two questions. So in the uh, next slide, you, you see that uh, the introduction of KFW. So KFW is uh, uh, a German development bank. So it's a public entity. Uh, uh, 
and it was created under the second world war uh, to implement marshall plan basically to rebuild germany and very soon uh, kw is also mandated for implementing german development cooperation uh, in the partner countries so as you can see that the shareholder is 80% federal republic of government and then 20% is federal estate so we have best rating triple a uh, balance sheet in 2019 was 506 uh, billion euro and financing volume was 77.3 billion euro we have had, uh, our headquarters is located in frankfurt uh, and then branch offices in berlin and bonn and uh, we have around 7000 employees and 80 offices uh, worldwide so in the next slide um, you see that uh, the structure like how uh, german development cooperation is organized so basically uh, as i already mentioned that on behalf of german government we implement german development cooperation in partner countries so basically the policy framework is set by a uh, federal ministry of economic cooperation and development bmz popularly known as bmz as well as other federal ministries and then the implementation is bilateral in, uh, development cooperation is in, uh, implemented by uh, different development agencies and there are division of labor and in german development cooperation system for technical cooperation it is gz and for financial cooperation uh, kw is mandated and we implement projects uh, uh, in this uh, way uh, so now i focus very much on bangladesh so in next slide you can see that uh, german development cooperation started uh, working in bangladesh uh, immediately after the independence Uh, and from the very beginning health and uh, governance was the focal area uh, and in 2014 uh, the health was phased out as the priority area and our major focus was basically rural development previously but slowly from rural to urban development the focus is also shifting shifting as because uh, rapid urbanization is also taking place in bangladesh so right at this moment around 35 36% people is uh, living in urban areas but as per the perspective plan that is prepared by government of bangladesh that by 2041 when bangladesh will be a developed country 80% people will be living in urban areas that means government is very ambitious for uh, uh, guiding or balancing or uh, 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 harmonizing the opportunity of urbanization so that's why germany is also focusing more uh, support from rural to urban area and then in 2014 new focal area established uh, uh, on the climate adaptation and from 2020 the shifting is uh, there is a shift from uh, german development cooperation like previously we have until 2020 we have three focal areas renewable energy energy efficiency adaptation to climate change in urban areas and then good governance rule of law and human rights so in 2020 there was a, a reorganization and focus is more on sdgs so the major pillar in bangladesh is climate financing the major pillar of german development cooperation in bangladesh in bangladesh is climate financing and under climate financing there is a there is a mitigation and adaptation window for mitigation it is energy renewable energy energy efficiency all different kind of uh, uh, greenhouse gas reduction uh, uh, solutions and for adaptation it the focus is uh, sustainable urban development that means adaptation in urban areas so that is the major focus and uh, a climate risk fund is uh, falling under this uh, focus or focal area and then governance uh, ready made garments and support to rohingya crisis these are the major focus of uh, german development cooperation in bangladesh so in the next slide so uh, you see that uh, uh, sustainable urban development or adaptation to climate change in um, urban areas like where is the focus uh, we are doing at the moment so uh, the major target target is reducing the vulnerability of particularly vulnerable population groups infrastructures and economic cycles in selected cities like these five cities mentioned by uh, rabbani bhai basically these five cities are selected jointly by uh, government of bangladesh and government of germany like these two government they had uh, uh, studies workshops meetings uh, and then uh, the agreement signed between two government that uh, these five cities are the primary uh, focal area for german development cooperation and uh, there are different blocks of support like uh, climate friendly infrastructure and adapted urban planning so in these cities and uh, uh, 
and then uh, mainstreaming climate change, climate resilient infrastructure. Like uh, under this project, we are this is a, a green climate fund uh, a mandated project we are implementing. One of the first project globally. So under this project, we are uh, we are supporting government of Bangladesh for climate resilient local infrastructure as well as setting up the national of center ex center of excellence. for integrating climate science into uh, then and bridge fund. So as uh, rightly mentioned by Rob Bani Bhai, that 11.735 uh, uh, million euro we started with, and then uh, uh, this year we also provided 10 more million, 10 more, uh, million euro uh, on behalf of German government. Uh, and this, uh, the reason uh, behind this thinking, like why we uh, created this fund or why we thought that this fund might be useful, I will explain in detail in, in, in the last slide, uh, in, in the next slide. Uh, but we, we, we thought that this through this uh, Green Climate Fund mandated project, we are working in the national level, setting up a national center of excellence. And then through our bilateral projects, bi bilateral usual projects, we are supporting municipal, I mean, urban planning and municipal level measures, municipal level adaptation infrastructures. So we were missing community level. So for addressing community level adaptation or local level adaptation, we thought that if a dedicated fund is created, uh, then it will uh, be useful so, that's, so that we can cover in different levels, national level, city level, and then local level. That was the initial thought uh, we uh, uh, why we established climate bridge fund, and then we have another project like uh, 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 very much focused on uh, solving the water supply crisis in Dhaka city. So we are working uh, with other European development partners, supporting Dhaka Wasa uh, in their uh, water supply projects uh, in one of the uh, big water treatment plant uh, projects. So in the next slide now, uh, I briefly mentioned like uh, why we thought that a CBF shall be formed, but the major elaboration is here. The objective of the project is capital capitalization of a permanent endowment for the sustainable financing of climate change adaptation in Bangladesh. This was one major objective uh, to finance innovative and critical measures for adaptation to climate change that require long-term small volume finance with necessity for planning security. Nadibai, I think, minute, can, you, can you just please go a bit quick? Yeah, I mean, I have one, I mean, in one or two minutes, I will be finishing. Like, uh, I, 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 will, I would like to explain here, I think the colleagues in CBA, Community Based Adaptation Forum, uh, I know that you always, uh, you always make arguments that adaptation is long term. So, uh, I mean, in two years, three years project, it is very difficult to justify that we are doing adaptation. So that's the long-term long -term adaptation needs long-term financing mechanism. Mm -hmm. So that's why we are creating long-term financing mechanism to support local level long-term adaptation measures. So that is the core focus. And the focus is in urban areas, urban slums, vulnerable urban slums is the primary focus. And the next slide is the last slide, like uh, delivery mechanism. It was briefly, uh, uh, it was briefly explained by Rob Bonibai, but the major uh, uh, thought behind it, like there is a cooperation between both government, like uh, government of Germany and Bangladesh, an agreement. Both government will establish this uh, climate peace fund. Uh, the CBF is civil society led. Like we know that in Bangladesh previously, there were climate change resilient fund, climate change trust, trust fund. But for uh, we thought that uh, for addressing our objective, it is important to have a civil society led uh, climate bridge fund uh, or climate financing mechanism. We have independent board of trustee advisory committee and CBF secretary. CBF secretary is heading by uh, Dr. Golan Rogmani. And there is a strong partnership between, between NGO, local community and city authority. We thought that community led initiative shall be supported by city authority, but we found that there is a missing stakeholder in this process. We need civil society. So civil society can really play a bridging role between local community and city authority. So we, we emphasize the partnership between NGO, local community and city authority. New approach in climate finance. We provided seed money. Uh, BRAC is uh, making the investments. From the investment, income is generated. And through that, project financing is, is planned. 
and the regulatory framework of government of bangladesh is also cooperative like although we thought initially some uh, some uh, calculation and assumption especially because uh, it, as it is very new so uh, the regulatory system is bangladesh they were also uh, making uh, assessments so it took some time than expected and then the taxation system like initially we thought something but now uh, government of bangladesh is imposing higher taxes uh, but Brag is working uh, very closely with government and from German's, German side, like from KW and German embassy and German government is also providing support and working very closely with government uh, to reduce the tax burden. So if we can achieve that, then it will be uh, really a, a successful model for uh, supporting community-based adaptation. Last point is it is not uh, exclusively like up to now, it is exclusively supported by Germany, government of Germany through KMW, but it is open for any development partner. Like if any other development partner could also bring money to support or scale, scale it up, then there is no restriction from German side. There is no restriction from KMW side. So now I would like to conclude here. Thank you, uh, Rob Excellent. Over. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you, Medibai. Thanks a lot for sharing your, uh, your portfolio and also you know, several important points I will summarize later. Uh, but at this point, uh, uh, there will be a group out, uh, breakout session. So we will actually you know, answer two questions, two major questions. What are the challenges that NGOs local actors face in accessing climate finance? And the second question is, what are the problems that donors face in financing locally led adaptation? So uh, uh, we'll have breakout session now. And I think you know, uh, once you are in the breakout session, Please discuss this, uh, these two questions and uh, uh, try to uh, get the inputs in three bullet points and, uh, and please identify a volunteer to, um, uh, to report back when we, um, when we resume the session. Dr. Rabani, okay. uh, yeah. just to say, there's a couple of questions in the chat as well, so it'd be good to get to those. Okay. So uh, there is a question about nature-based solution. Shall I take it over or whenever you would like yes, to please, 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 please go ahead. Okay. Number one question, like, number one aspect is like, we have very, uh, very rigorous environmental and social safeguard requirements. So all the projects are screened very systematically by climate, uh, the Secretariat of CBF as well as by, from KW side, so that no harm and all the norms from the environmental and social safeguard issues are ensured. This is one point. Number two point is we always, uh, I mean, promote nature-based solution, definitely. And within the scope of CBA, um, uh, up until now, like four projects from 2020, 14 projects from the emergency response window 2021, and upcoming four projects from climate change window uh, 2021. Like in total, it will be uh, 22 projects within the scope of this 22 project, if there's any natural asset, definitely it will be taken care of and it will, it will be enhanced. But apart from that, from our bilateral portfolio within German Development Corporation in Bangladesh, nature-based solution we are promoting. We are creating uh, our, I mean, German funded projects, how this infrastructure could be created as the public space, like protecting water body, protect, creating green spaces, and then the grain infrastructure, how to add value with uh, uh, adding green, uh, green uh, options so that all those places could be trans uh, transformed as the public space so that the connection between people and then connection between infrastructure uh, could be created and uh, it, it impacts social life uh, uh, very positively. So that is, that is in our heart. I would like to say that is in our heart. Now I am uh, passing over to Rob Baniwai. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. I think, you know, we do have an open discussion session. We can also discuss uh, some of these questions in that, um, uh, that session. But to, to respond to this question again, you know, let me just uh, raise one more point. Uh, during the uh, designing and planning of the projects, you know, each and every pro proponent has to submit uh, environment and social impact analysis, okay? So that, um, you know, we know much before the implementation on the uh, on the potential environmental and social impact on the, uh, of the projects. So uh, that's how uh, we are trying to make sure 
uh, technically that environment is not not uh, adversely affected due to the project implementation so now i think um, uh, we can go uh, to the breakout session and we have 20 minutes for breakout session we come back after exactly 20 minutes and uh, uh, you know but the volunteer i would request find a volunteer to um, to report back and we'll give uh, you know about uh, 8 minutes to um, uh, to uh, for the uh, for the volunteers or facilitators to report back so we go back to uh, breakout session now. Welcome Hello. back. Thank you so much. I think we should start from the uh, you know group one. Who is going to start? It, are you are you group one or my group one? I was group one. I was facilitating group one. Okay. So let me share a few uh, of our discussion points. We did have a really interesting discussion. Um, we started on the question of what are the challenges that NGOs and local actors face in accessing climate finance. And we picked out this assumption that all the money has to go through NGOs. It doesn't. They are only, they're only one player. And we heard an example from Uganda where money came uh, via the ministry to local governments, but also to SDI. And it created uh, equal partners in delivering a project that held each other accountable. Um, we noted that the national government can be a barrier. So if their policy is out of date, we noted the Bangladesh action plan is out of date. That makes it hard for everybody to know what the overall direction is. And sometimes national government can refuse the proposals of local government. And that can also be uh, a problem. There are lots of hurdles to jump through that can slow down access to the local level. And there isn't necessarily the evidence to request funds from, from climate finance uh, uh, funds. We then switched on to this question of what are the problems that donors face? Now, we didn't have any donors in the room, so we were guessing a little bit, but we, we picked up firstly on their pressure for results, that it's easier to report on mitigation, um, and donors maybe are not confident in locally-led activities enough. That and, and the reason for that is that there are not enough honest brokers between communities and themselves. There are organizations often NGOs posing as as you know uh, saviors of the poor but they're not necessarily able to do the listening that's required um, they make compromises so that they can continue to survive so the communication between community and donor isn't there so donors don't have a proper understanding of the capacity that is already inherent at local level there is also the issue that we don't want to report the truth to donors we sugarcoat so that everything can sound uh, everything can sound like it's great, even when it isn't uh, uh, necessary. The other issue that we talked about is NGOs don't necessarily have the capacity to generate the kind of evidence of practice that donors want to see. So um, the community level requirements are not being communicated because the capacity for mail isn't there. And it's important to build and maybe donors need to take this responsibility to build networks of NGOs. Donors are often blind to the local structures of NGOs that are there, and they need to build these networks so that they can disseminate finance, but also build their understanding of how to report back. Uh, I hope that's an accurate uh, depiction of, of what we spoke about, but others, please do uh, share any corrections in the chat, maybe, uh, as, we, as we continue. So thanks very much. Thank you so much, Sam. Thank you so much. Excellent. Is there, uh, is there anyone who wants to add, uh, Sam? No, it was excellent. So, Lynn, do you want to add anything or uh, you just commented, it's okay? <laughs> yeah, it, yeah he, he covered all the points, yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, so may I now request uh, Barry to... Um, yeah, no, no worries at all. Okay, so in terms of the challenges, um, one thing which came out quite clearly and which was actually, I remember was something which came out from CBA last time as well. And this is around the sort of the, the asymmetry of information. It's quite often the case that uh, communities don't have the information, one in terms of the funding available, the, the, the ways in which to access it. Um, but they also don't have the capacity to actually, um, you know, the absorptive capacity for the funds as well. Um, and that's something that sort of signposts 
there, there needs to be a shift in the role of the different actors, the different intermediaries and the different donors and funders to actually try and build that capability rather than sort of coming in and, and, and just trying to do it themselves. It needs to be, you know, it needs to move to sort of build their, their, their capability. Um, the, 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 the definition of adaptation, adaptation means different things to different people. So whose interpretation of ad adaptation are we going with here? You know, at the community level, it's going to be quite different to sort of some of the, the aspirations at the national level. So we discussed th there might be the opportunity to separate actions into different blocks depending on the actor group. For example, at the at the community group at uh, the community level, it's looking at livelihoods. Uh, it could perhaps look at DRR um, at the national level. But again, it's this, there isn't given that there's there's a sort of there's a woolly definition. Or there's not a universal definition. It's going to be it's going to be quite difficult. Uh, one thing which came up, which caused a bit of contention, and I don't think we really quite resolved, was that there was this notion that there might be some anti-migration and anti-urban sentiment in this space, um, and that sort of evinced by uh, a lack of urban examples. But there is a uh, there actually is another session which is which is specifically looking at that. So perhaps that 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 points to the fact that we need to kind of join this up a little bit more. Uh, one thing we looked at is um, perhaps having I think it was shovel ready uh, interventions, and I don't think that's I don't think that was sort of off the peg solutions, but it's actually having a look at how uh, projects are designed. Um, it's actually looking at how much things are going to cost. And having an idea up front to try and expedite the 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 the, the, um, the funding, and it's working with local NGOs as facilitative bodies as well as local government and everything. Um, we touched upon, in terms of the problems that donors face, uh, we touched upon um, the issues of transparency and accountability, which again came out in opening plenary, and again is something which came up last year as well, and. The, the idea is that there does need to be more, more transparency and there needs to be more accountability, but that can't translate to more bureaucracy on the ground in terms of reporting burden, in terms of the preparation of proposals. So there needs to be this balance of sort of required information versus capability versus expediency. And it's trying to sort of balance these three these three elements and and and, it, and it's developing a process which is going to be locally suitable. Um, Claire, Claire is going to come in with, with what I feel is a very good point but then we got chucked out. So Claire, if you'd like to come in here with your point, no, that'd be, that'd be good. Uh, Barry, I think actually part of what I was going to say has just been, it was said by um, Sam's uh, um, report back which is um around the role that that the um the the uh, uh development partners of the communities um have to play in terms of bridging that 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 tr translating that bureaucracy into terms that communities can understand and then um helping the communities with that information asymmetry that you were talking about and the need for more uh, organizations to sort of step up to be that sort of business unusual honest brokers that Sam referred to. Thanks. Uh, that's, uh, that's, that's it for me. If anybody else from the group wants to chip in, please do. If not, I think we can, um, uh, we can uh, start with our next, next presentation session. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Barry. And uh, thank you, Claire, and, uh, and all the uh, you know, participants in, in group one and group two. So, uh, uh, right now, we are going to share our experiences of CBF partners. So we have representative from different partners, um, Nahin Firdos from uh, Ultra Poor Graduation Program of BRAC and uh, Dr. Muhammad Abdul Kayum Khan from uh, Health, Nutrition and Population Program of BRAC. We have Saif Manjur Al-Islam from Waterid, Bangladesh and Dr. Arut Toppo from Karitas, Bangladesh. And these are the organizations who actually received, you know, uh, support from Climate Breeze Fund in 2020. So they are implementing four separate projects in, um, uh, in, in, in Rashahi and also in Kulna. 
So um, uh, we do have some guiding questions. So uh, at this point, I would request uh, Nahil for those from UPGP to share your uh, your experiences and reflections. Nahin Firdos, are you there? Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Abani. Thank you so much. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I hope you all can hear me. Uh, uh, due to the limitation of time, I'll just quickly go to the presentation. So I would request the navigator to please change the slide. Yeah, thank you. So uh, first of all, uh, my name is Nahin Firdos. I'm working in Brax Altapur graduation program and also leading the uh, project under the CBF, and uh, which is funded by KFW, of course. So the title is uh, Strengthening Climate Resilience Among the Climate-Induced uh, Migrants in the Vulnerable Urban Communities. So uh, this particular project is jointly implemented by BRAC's Altapur Graduation Program and Humanitarian Program. We are working in two city corporations in the urban area, and we are specifically targeting the Altapur climate-induced migrants. So uh, 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 before that, I would like to talk about some of the challenges that we have seen uh, in, in the arena of climate finance. So first of all, um, uh, it's, it's basically the limited funding opportunity. Why I say this is when we want to tap into uh, financing opportunities, we see that you know there are um, a very limited climate-related financing mechanism. So this is where I think there should be a global push uh, to ensure that more fundings are channeled to such countries like Bangladesh and we can utilize the fund to actually effectively use it and implement our projects. Uh, next, I would like to talk about you know, the inclusion of private sector uh, for this uh, financing mechanism. So uh, we, we all know, and it's very well acknowledged that you know, the private sectors are not adequately involved in the climate change decision-making process. And of course, uh, um, uh, also in the implementation of government uh, policy and strategies in many countries like Bangladesh, uh, however, the private sector itself can play a vital role in ensure that, you know, uh, the mitigation and adaptations are, are conducted uh, across the world. So for that, I think it's very important to share the knowledge on climate change strategies and also the technologies to the private sector so that they can bring in more technologies into the market. And that could be utilized by, you know, the, uh, the country and, and, of course, the targeted people. Uh, next is about the governance. Uh, so, of course, uh, it's it's very important to improve the governance mechanism to uh, ensure the you know effectiveness of utilizing these funds. And why I say this is basically uh, the participation of multi-stakeholders uh, is very important, so that the transparency is maintained at the same time the accountability is ensured uh, uh, for an effective use of such funding uh, opportunities. Um, next, I would like to talk about the mobilization of uh, climate funds. But, but before that, it's very important to enhance the institutional capacity uh, uh, of, of many, many institutions because, you know, uh, mobilizing the climate finance itself requires a lot of skills, a lot of technical know-how and a lot of, you know, process-oriented knowledge. So for that, I think uh, uh, the uh, institutional capacity is very important. And at the same time, the country level authorities can work together to discuss and negotiate and enhance the capacity of, of the public, private, and multi uh, stakeholders. And uh, next is about the application process. So I, I, I was just thinking when, when we uh, apply for such fundings, in some cases, the applications process are a bit bureaucratic and it's, it's a bit lengthy. So in, in uh, most of the cases or in some of the cases, we miss out some uh, emergency working windows. So that's also important to prioritize what are the emergency working windows and uh, what should be the application process timeline and the overall documentation and everything. And finally, I would like to talk about the vulnerable targeted groups. So I think specifically there are some focus needed to ensure you know, the women, the elderly people, persons with disability, ethnic minor minority and youth focused financing. Um, I think climate finance can be a, an, a very good tool to, uh, to ensure the empowerment and resilience of such groups. And at the same time, this will, end, uh, this will address long-term vision and sustainability to investment. Uh, can we go to the next slide? Uh, so about the strategy that BRAC has taken over the time, I think CBF, the Climate Bridge Fund, the first, uh, could you please click? Yeah. So CBF, the Climate Bridge Fund itself is one of the great strategy that BRAC 
uh, has taken forward to boost the climate financing and accelerate climate resilient activities across all programs, like we are doing in ultra poor graduation program and humanitarian program. Next is basically BRAC is also working to enhance the you know public private partnership to overcome the challenges and also uh, build a long term uh, resilience. Uh, on, on three, we have uh, a dedicated program, the climate change program, which BRAC is leading. So this particular program is also, you know, doing fantastic work in terms of, um, you know, creating adaptive models with BRAC's pioneer, existing pioneer model. For example, the graduation approach itself, uh, it's, it's a big uh, livelihood model for BRAC and BRAC has pioneered it. Now we are working closely with the climate change program to build in, you know, new models climate adaptive models in the origin and also in the destination areas. So this is uh, a very good uh, thing. And next is, of course, uh, building resilience among the local stakeholders. So the, uh, the organization is also working relentlessly to work with the local stakeholders to ensure the coping mechanism within the community and the participants. Uh, next slide is about uh, some of the uh, inclusion strategies that we have taken under this project or under our activities is basically when we are going to implement the project that we are working right now, we want to ensure that the whole thing is transferred to the community, to the, uh, to the stakeholders, to the local government, as well as to the people, those who are living there. So for that, first of all, we are uh, enhancing the technical uh, skills and the technical know-how among the community-led committees. Uh, basically, the slums have the managers and these managers have their own committees. And we want to ensure that they have uh, strength and capacity uh, and they know uh, the climate resilience uh, planning and activities. And then we are also working with the local government. For example, the city corporations in the targeted areas to ensure that uh, they, we have a good collaboration with them. At the same time, they are uh, providing the needed support uh, that the climate-induced migrants are uh, basically uh, they need. Um, of course, BRAC, in BRAC, we, are, we have partnered with a humanitarian program. We are jointly implementing this because uh, one of the you know, aspect of climate change effect is, of course, the humanitarian part. So over there, we have some, several interventions to ensure that the local community and the slum uh, is uh, the slum uh, uh, dwellers are basically getting that support from us. Uh, we are also uh, trying to find out and also trying to partner up with public and private stakeholders to ensure some clean technologies within our uh, project activities. And finally, uh, building a model of climate resilient graduation program in the urban context so that we can scale up through uh, BRAC's internal uh, uh, resources in the future, in the coming future, and we can uh, benefit more, more people. Thank you so yeah. much. That was all. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Nahin, for those. Um, may I now request Dr. Abdul Kayum Khan, uh, HNPB Bragg, to uh, share your experience? Uh, thank you, Gulam Rabbani Bhai. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. I'm uh, Dr. Uh, Mahmoud Abdul Kayum Khan, working at You have five minutes, um, uh, you know. Yeah, yes. Uh, I'm working at Bath uh, Health uh, Program, mainly uh, working as a focal person of the project Strengthening Community Resilience uh, to Climate Sensitive Diseases in City Corporation of Bangladesh, which is funded by Climate Bridge Fund. Please, ne next slide. <coughs> Uh, here, uh, we have uh, found some challenges to access the climate uh, finance uh, at local level. Uh, mainly, I want to talk about the lack of awareness on correlation between health and climate change. Uh, actually, all of us uh, know about the climate change, but mostly people uh, think that the climate change causes the various natural disasters, but they don't or can't think about the climate change is uh, very much related to various health effects. Such as uh, in each year, uh, we uh, see in our country that in summer season, uh, there is an increase of diarrheal diseases. Uh, they see that uh, increase of diarrheal diseases, but they can't uh, correlate that how this is increased um, because uh, the increased temperature uh, results in higher uh, pathogen replication, uh, persistence, survival, and transmission. Uh, so this is highly uh, related uh, to the climate change. And that we don't know uh, in local level or uh, lack of awareness in local level. And then limited funding opportunity. 
uh, that is uh, already said uh, in previous uh, presentation. In our local bodies of Bangladesh, uh, there, are, uh, there is usually a constant shortage of funds. Mostly their income sources are various taxes, fees, holding tax, rents, and profits from uh, properties, etc. Uh, from government, the uh, local finance option is only the Bangladesh Climate uh, Change Trust Fund, uh, which is a bit, uh, big challenge at local level to access uh, sufficient climate financing. And uh, thirdly, there is a scarcity of uh, relevant knowledge material. Uh, at, uh, at this is a new concept, uh, uh, which is uh, uh, a new concept, and uh, there is not many much uh, uh, knowledge or research uh, paper available uh, for us uh, from where we can learn or get adequate information for our new project. Uh, then uh, lack of monitoring uh, from overall progress point of view. Uh, here I want to say that uh, in case of uh, project implementation at a uh, local level, uh, uh, main focus keeps on the whether the project is established or not, whether the budget is burnt accordingly. Uh, but there is a lack of monitoring in project uh, uh, progress level, especially uh, how much the project uh, could reach to its targeted vulnerable community, whether the gender inclusion is maintained or not, whether the male or female ratio is okay or not. So there is a lack of monitoring in the, it is, the, it is also a challenge. Next slide, please. Uh, what strategies uh, are from uh, are taken from our uh, uh, organization? I, I have already said about a, a project that is uh, taken uh, uh, funded by the uh, Climate Risk Fund. This bracket project funded by Climate Risk Fund will enable a uh, BRAC health program to formulate strategies considering the impact of climate change on health through insights from the implementation. This project aims to strengthen the community resilience to climate sensitive diseases through sensitizing stakeholders, that is our community people and the local actors, such as uh, the um, officials of city corporation, uh, local political leaders, etc., on how climate change is related to our health, providing education on preventing the climate sensitive diseases. And we are also uh, uh, providing some preventive health materials to them and uh, strengthening access to effective disease management, whether they are uh, um, already diseased, how they can access the management, how they can access the management, uh, that we are uh, uh, working on that. Next slide, please. Uh, Inclusion of communities and uh, local actors. Uh, here, we are genuinely uh, inclusion uh, of communities uh, by engagement of stakeholders in all stages, including uh, planning, designing, and implementation of the project, and uh, that they can talk about, uh, they can get, uh, uh, they can give us feedback. Uh, we can take the, uh, um, uh, their, uh, what they want to say. Then service provision to the doorsteps of community people. Uh, we have a uh, um, uh, worker, community health worker, who goes uh, door by door to the community people and uh, provides uh, the um, service. And uh, there they can take uh, a strong feedback, uh, feedback uh, from the uh, community people to us. And uh, we then try to uh, uh, solve those and uh, give a solution. The service pollution to all people, irrespective of age, gender, ethnicity, etc. That is, we include all the people, uh, irrespective of age, gender, all the vulnerable people, marginalized people, uh, uh, etc. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, here we can see. Uh, here we can see uh, we have a, a, a meeting in the upper pictures at the communities um, uh, during the um, uh, planning of the project. Uh, and uh, uh, that is uh, in the lower pictures, we have uh, meetings with the city corporation officials uh, to uh, let them know what we're going to do and uh, took their feedback and uh, we uh, uh, took uh, in our uh, activities. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Khan Khan, for sharing your experiences. And uh, uh, now I would request Saif Majur Islam from Waterid, Bangladesh. Yeah. Hello, Lord, everyone. Uh, Saif, thank, you. Minutes, thank you so much, Rabani Bhai and all uh, for place funding uh, Waterid, Bangladesh. I'm Saif Mansur and a leading climate resilience prog implementation uh, program implementation of Waterid, Bangladesh. Uh, so, as we all know, uh, Bangladesh has been labeled as one of the most vulnerable uh, countries in the world. Uh, the influence of climate change uh, alter our water cycle, affecting our availability of fresh water for drink drinking, as well as for our sanitation and hygiene. Uh, in this presentation, uh, I want to present the climate finance and wash disconnects in uh, Bangladesh. 
So uh, the next slides, uh, please. Okay. Uh, so the challenges that we face, especially focusing on uh, wash and climate finance uh, uh, interactions, I would say the first uh, barrier we have found that the lag in uh, government policies, uh, one of the uh, major or prominent uh, climate change related strategy is Bangladesh climate change strategy and uh, action uh, plan. Uh, which targeted WASH in their uh, theme one under uh, their program seven. But interestingly, uh, the implementing uh, body of these uh, action plans is uh, Bangladesh Climate Change Trust Fund, who didn't actually receive a single proposal uh, based on WASH till now uh, from 2009. Uh, also, uh, I would say uh, that uh, these documents uh, are not updated as, uh, for example, is being aligned with MDG, uh, still now uh, we are now dealing with the SDG uh, goals. So uh, these are one things. Uh, and uh, apart from these things, uh, these uh, documents are mostly focused in the drought and saline affected areas where the other hard to reach areas, for example, urban slums, hill, chore, uh, landlocks areas are being missing. So uh, this is a kind of gap from uh, climate uh, policy related documents in uh, our uh, government perspective. On the other hand, if you focus on water, uh, sanitation related uh, documents, uh, for example, in Water Act 2013, Water Rules, uh, National Water Management Plan, uh, we would, uh, we, we didn't find any uh, climate impact or uh, they actually didn't recognize the climate impact on the uh, water scarcity uh, in the broader perspective of uh, integrated water resource management. So in one hand, uh, uh, so they have a kind of both end interactions between them. Uh, they have deficiencies in uh, policies integration, I would say. Uh, and uh, obviously the other factors like hygiene, second generation sanitation problems are being uh, neglected in uh, the uh, in most of the uh, most of the policies and other things. Even the government projects are mostly focused on infrastructure oriented funds. Uh, so. Uh, these are the basic lags in uh, government policies and practices, I would say. Uh, in terms of budget allocation, uh, uh, first of all, I would say the WASH budget allocation is mostly focused in uh, urban areas, I would say, rather uh, than focusing in the vulnerable coastal belts, uh, rural areas, and the hard to reach areas. And importantly, WASH has been uh, uh, cited as a complementary subsector of the broader areas like livelihood, uh, public health, nutrition. Uh, so uh, whether uh, the requirement of safe drinking water, sanitation is the very basic needs of, a, of people uh, who uh, are affected by uh, climatic disasters and other uh, climate factors. Uh, also the funding mechanism uh, of climate finance, uh, especially uh, the larger portfolios like GCF are, uh, are uh, backed by a very complex process with uh, which needs accreditation from government, uh, from other uh, entities. Uh, so uh, these are kind of, uh, as well as uh, the private sector involvement is very limited in terms of uh, tapping the climate finance uh, portfolios out. Uh, here in Bangladesh. So most of the pri uh, private sector are not that much interested to work and invest uh, in the climate financing uh, sector and uh, sector in uh, Bangladesh perspective. So on the next slide, I would uh, present uh, what are the approaches that our country program, what a Bangladesh country program is now adopting. The first one is, uh, is uh, start with aligning with the broader uh, strategies like SDG, uh, SDG goals. Uh, 
sector development plan, uh, eight five-year plan, Bangladesh Water Act, etc. And also we, uh, along with uh, aligning our activities with the broader uh, strategies, we focus on promoting our best practices, for example, community uh, led total sanitation based wash fund generation, women entrepreneurship development, where uh, and uh, uh, and maintaining community level action plan out there. Also, we try to uh, uh, we try to map our opportunities uh, as uh, wash has been seen as a subsector, so that we try to uh, go for a consortium formation to tap on the broader areas of uh, public health uh, with. Uh, like public health and livelihood, uh, we we try to uh, we are now uh, accessing with uh, new funds like European Commission and CSR fund of multiple water industries out there who actually acknowledge the requirement of uh, uh, funding in uh, wash sector as well as definitely Climate Bridge Fund has been uh, one of our uh, major uh, opportunities that we recently found and. Uh, with the integration uh, of WASH along with uh, livelihood entrepreneurship, income generating activities, and importantly, uh, microfinance access for the climate migrants uh, we are now uh, offering with, uh, within this uh, portfolio of climate, uh, right. climate bridge fund Finish project. It. Yes, uh, Rabani Bhai, the next slide. Uh, yes. Uh, the. Uh, project we have been uh, implementing with the support from uh, CBF is uh, composite action for the climate magnets in urban areas where uh, we are implementing this project for uh, in Rajshay City Corporation for about a 30 uh, 38 months, uh, we are targeting to support uh, 10,000 individual people among them 65% would be climate migrants and it would be uh, definitely 51% of women would be our uh, beneficiaries out there. So that's all from my end, Rabani Bhai, and thanks for hosting us. Thank you so much, Saif, for, uh, for sharing your challenges and, and other aspects. Uh, um, now I would request Dr. Aruk, uh, Aruk Tapu from Karitas, Bangladesh, to share your experiences, please. Dr. Arup, you have okay. five minutes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Golam Rabbani, please uh, ensure me. Uh, do you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Hello? yeah okay. Do. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, because uh, due to the uh, network, I am facing some problems. Okay. Mm -hmm. So just uh, within five minutes, I want to finish my presentation. First is the Kaitas Bangladesh. Already you uh, know about the organizations. So this is the national organization of Bangladesh. And uh, Kaitas Bangladesh have the about 40 uh, years of working experience in that field of development, disaster management, rural health, education, environment protection, uh, and conservation. Also, we have the uh, long experience to work with the indigenous people in Bangladesh. So regarding the uh, climate change adaptation, we now implementing uh, eight project uh, not full on the uh, climate change adaptation, but uh, we just integrate some adaptation activities in our uh, project very related to the uh, agriculture. So now through our project, we are promoting. Okay, so uh, what actually what challenge we are facing to access the climate fund, uh, climate fin financing as a local NGOs. No? So first is uh, the access to the government and international funds like uh, BCCTA, uh, BCC, RF, and uh, ZCA funds. So it's very difficult to access uh, for a local NGO uh, in, in this uh, uh, in this fund mechanism. Uh, and, another uh, challenge is uh, the government, private sector, private donor also uh, invest here in the low amount of finance because uh, so if the donor government and the private sector will invest here more then uh, the finance will be available for the adaptations uh, third is of course in, in bangladesh context uh, there is no strong platform or network among the local level ngos for accessing the climate uh, financing and of course uh, capacity is the challenge for the local uh, organizations to prepare a good quality of projects so that uh, we can access the uh, international fund uh, regarding the climate adaptations. 
and of course uh, already i have said the uh, do donor fund is not adequate uh, in this field and uh, the last challenge we feel that bangladesh is a uh, disaster uh, prone country so frequent natural disaster is here so most of the investment is goes to the uh, emergency response instead of the long term adaptations no so uh, our private donor are uh, invest they are money in the uh, emergency response okay next please please next hello yeah okay 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 thank you uh, so what strategy kites bangladesh have taken to overcome this challenge so first one is kites uh, is the member organization of uh, international kites federations no uh, you know jo, all over the world there is a 165 kites members organization so we motivate the organization to invest their finance in this issues uh, second is uh, we continuously coordination with the national international uh, level or, uh, ngos who are working who are financing in this uh, field uh, like icart bcs uicn and uh, uh, of course uh, climate bridge fund so in the meantime uh, climate bridge fund have opened a new window of the finance in this uh, field so uh, of course uh, kites bangladesh have accessed here uh, in this uh, financial me uh, finance mechanisms and another strategy kites bangladesh have taken uh, include the cca in agriculture project and early recovery project of disaster management because we have uh, more than eight project on agriculture and uh, more than 20 project on uh, disaster management especially in the early recovery so uh, kites bangladesh is trying to adopt the climate change adaptation activities in that project so it's our strategy uh, the last one how uh, the climate bridge fund uh, are financing Uh, locally led adaptations so one thing is a climate bridge fund is the new window in our bangladesh and very effective windows uh, because there is the easy access uh, there is the good governance there is no partiality so it, though it is a competitive but good good proposal is accepted here no so here, here is here is a ex, uh, creating a access uh, to the local finance Uh, local level organizations the capacity building also through the process through the windows through the uh, climate bridge fund uh, the local level uh, organizations like kites bangladesh is uh, capacity uh, capacitated no and uh, second we have uh, experience through this project that the climate bridge fund is really contributing in the city level especially the stakeholders of city authority started realization the and importance the of the climate change adaptation for the climate migrant in the urban area so they are uh, we, we are trying to advocate with the authority to include this type of uh, fund in their uh, annual budget or the uh, annual budget no so yeah. thank okay. you so much thank you so much uh, arifda excellent point uh, we have noted your um, uh, your experiences Uh, I think it's time for uh, uh, starting the breakout uh, breakout sessions. Um, uh, we have three questions uh, you can see from the slide. How can local partner organizations best channel money to the local level? What do local organizations need to do to create the conditions to improve access to finance? And the last question is how can they become more attractive to donors? So we'll have again, uh, you know, the two uh, two rooms. Um, I think we have the twenty one participants, so so we can have two two groups. Uh, may I request Sam to, uh, if you are there, um, to facilitate one group, group one, and Barry to uh, facilitate group two. Yes, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, sounds good. I mean, thank you so much. Um, uh, we had a uh, we had excellent discussion in the. Uh, in in room one, and I'm sure that the same uh, has happened in in room two. So um, may I now request um, uh, Celine to share your um, uh, your discussion? What key messages that you have captured from the uh, room one? Celine. 
Serene, are you there? Sorry, I was not muted. Yeah. How can local partner organizations best channel money to the local level? So the conversation around this was about, uh, you know, the assumption that every organization has all the capacity from bookkeeping to, uh, you know, ma management to monitoring and everything. And that is not the case. And especially for small NGOs and small uh, civil society organizations, it's important that they kind consolidate their capacities and skills and their networks to be able to uh, use whatever funding is coming to the advantage of the local communities. And we have seen there's a challenge even in that kind of networking happening locally. Uh, secondly, there was a point made on the, you know, how, how do you build donor confidence and what are the things that you need to do proactively to actually get funders to look at you and to, and to believe that you have the capacity and one is to be active to, to, to show, to do and show and to be able to uh, build these uncomfortable capacities that most NGOs don't want to build and to make an effort to do that, which is bookkeeping and, you know, accountability, even basic thing like accountability really doesn't need lots of skill. It just means being more honest and being an honest broker and being accountable to what is happening on the ground. And uh, I would like to add here that, you know, the relationship that NGOs have with their donor gets reflected on what happens, the same dynamics, what happens below. So if you are not very accountable to your donor, you're not going to expect that relationship to be very different between the community and yourself. And so creating that ethos is important. Uh, the other thing that, uh, that came out was that donors find it comfortable giving it to intermediary organizations that they already know or that are reputable and that they would rather do that than go through the pains of trying to you know, figure out what is happening locally. And uh, so this has been one of the constraints and uh, how do we get over this? So there is no quick fix, but there are different ways in which uh, in which uh, funding can be delegated. And we have seen over time, there is an evolution of different new types of actors and new types of platforms and new types of solutions where uh, fund, you know, donors have tested on how to do this differently. And uh, we hope we can consolidate those lessons through sessions like this. Thank you so much, Selin. Thank you so much. Um, uh, Barry, you have two minutes, please, if you can finish your... Uh, yes, I'd like to invite Gloria to feedback, please. Okay, please. Yes, hi. Well, uh, on group two, we had a very interesting conversation and I, I appreciate that most of us uh, kept kept our answers to our own experience and also try to be very, uh, I, I would put the adjective simple about it. You know, what's the easiest way to get this done? So for the first question, we talked also about the um, uh, restrictions that um, communities have accessing the, the, the financing. So we talked about shifting the burden as the first point, shifting the burden from the applicant uh, um, and kind of balancing out the responsibilities uh, between the institution in this case, or the NGO and the applicants. So that um, things like, like uh, monitoring or budgeting, those responsibilities didn't have to be taken up by the applicant. That will reduce a little bit of the stress from the applicant and encourage the applicant to, to, to be part of, the, of any program. And um, also uh, this led us to start talking about the second question about, about how to improve access. And, and two things came up. One of them being that there's very, uh, there's not that much funding at the local level. So the first two thing would be to increase that, increase that, change that, increase grants at the local level uh, that are more accessible. And in that case, also, um, Gabriela was talking about the concept onus broker and saying how uh, when programs or financing is um, trying to be long-term, then throughout the process, we have to keep contacting other financing institutions so we can network, so we can um, keep that finance in the communities. 
Um, and that also brings consistency that will bring together capacity building at the community level because the community is going to know that financing is going to come each year and get prepared for, for every um, like application period maybe. And then in the third one about talking to being more attractive, um, we kind of concluded that uh, climate, climate action is attractive. You know, everybody's on board on doing climate action. So maybe the question is about um, uh, how can we better reach out to other donors? Not being attractive, but maybe just literally going out and reaching and contacting and building a network. And, and that also uh, be focusing on how this process is going to be a learning experience also for the donors. And so we can offer uh, is through their participation and donations, they're getting also capacity building experience and, and, and other type of, of knowledge that can help the donor or that can be attractive in this case for the donor. I Thank, you. Sure. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think I think this was uh, this was really great, and uh, I'm sorry that um, we have time limitation. And uh, initially, we had planned that we would have some time for open discussion, clarification, and question. But we need to really skip this uh, this discussion. And I, I believe that we had enough uh, enough time to uh, you know to raise our issues, concerns, and uh, uh, the points in the uh, in the two group out sessions. So. I will straight go um, um, go to the last session and uh, try to you know share you know some of the issues that I captured from the uh, entire discussions and and close the session uh, as early as possible maybe in next five minutes. Uh, uh, I hope my colleague B uh, Barry will be, be uh, will bear with me and um, uh, let me start from the uh, from the first point of um, you know of our discussion um, uh, when we started this session. You know, we tried our best to uh, to set an example of uh, of climate risk fund, which which is actually helping overcoming the excess challenges uh, of climate finance from the local level organizations. And how did we really do that? You know, first first uh, you know a point is uh, we we ensured uh, so that the local organizations take the lead and design the projects and and plan the projects and implement the, implement the projects. Uh, maybe they can take uh, uh, take experience and capacity from the international organizations, but they have to implement the, implement the projects. So, and from starting to disbursement of the fund, we do not take more than six months. So that is one of the important points. So that's how really our partners believe that this is one of the examples. You know, as 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 you have heard from from all of them that the limited uh, limitation of the fund and the excess duration is quite long. You know they take more than one year to to access the fund and take the fund uh, or money to the um, um, uh, to the ground. So that was um, uh, that was the uh, the message that we have from the uh, first uh, first uh, presentation. And my colleague from KFW, Mr. Mehdi Hassan, who raised actually you know several issues, but I would I would focus one or two points. You know he mentioned clearly mentioned that the climate financing is one of um, uh, you know KFW's. A priority issue, uh, you know, particularly invest investment on urban adaptation, and uh, and uh, they also mentioned that they uh, these projects might be small, but uh, but it should be long term, uh, you know, uh, sustainable projects for for local level NGOs and stakeholders. So which is very strong point that that he mentioned, and from the group work discussion, and there are a number of challenges uh, they mentioned, you know, for both. Uh, NGOs and and also for uh, for the donors and if if I mention one or two points you know excess duration is 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 really important because from starting to um, to get the money disbursed uh, for the local level uh, is extremely important for the uh, for the NGOs and for the communities because uh, you know uh, if two days or the current priorities uh, you know um, is is not adequately addressed. With the funding or resources immediately, then the priorities might get changed at the local level after two years, three years. When you apply two years back and get the money after three years, so this is one of the important points. Uh, and of course, you know uh, we have heard that uh, fund available information 
you know is is another another challenges for the local organization because they are look at it at the um, at the uh, sub district district level and they need you know information um, on the fund availability and also policy strategies are also outdated in terms of you know one of my colleague has mentioned that um, uh, you know uh, bangladesh climate change strategy and action plan it was uh, it was uh, it was uh, you know gazetted in 20, uh, 2009 and uh, it was also reviewed in 2018 but it's still um, uh, it is uh, it is not available for the participants so what is the priority and how they they can link with the local organ um, local policy national policy this becomes again a challenge for the ngos in terms of challenges of the donors you know there are several issues uh, you know the first point is the capacity of the local um, local organization is not really um, uh, you know uh, in some cases probably um, 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 you know what the donors uh, is not confident uh, confident on and again one major issue that many of the participants mentioned in the in the group discussion is the intermediary institutions is the honest brokers which is extremely important for the um, 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 uh, for the um, um, uh, for the donors and evidences from the from the communities because sometimes it is really difficult let me tell you one example from uh, from climate bridge fund when we often discuss about the climate migrants there are a question how do you really attribute this uh, these people are actually climate migrants in the urban areas and this is challenging because there are a lot of people they migrate from rural areas to the urban areas and there are you know push back factors pull factors and some are economic migrants some are climate migrants some are you know, um, um, uh, yeah, some are migrating for different reasons. So it's not that, uh, you know, um, uh, um, um, we cannot really uh, scientifically attribute or um, that evidence that we have that this, these people are really absolutely, you know, uh, migrated because of climatic reasons. And the transparency and accountability is another, another uh, issue for the, uh, for the donors. Uh, uh, from the breakout groups, uh, um, uh, this this was the discussion from the uh, first breakout group, and from the partners' view, I would I would mention one, uh, two or three points maximum. You know, the capacity of the local NGOs is is one of the issue, and limited funding uh, uh, funding opportunity is 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 the uh, is the uh, important uh, you know barrier or the issue for for all local level NGOs that um, uh, that was shared by. Uh, both of my uh, uh, my black colleagues and also non black ngos and they also mentioned about several needs technical support to ngos collaboration with city corporation and prioritization of the um, of the of the national policies and the and the local ngos and from the last last breakout group sessions there are several messages that we have got you know the number one is the coalitions of, of ngos i mean sharing expertise skills capacity uh, for implementation of uh, of adaptation actions and um, and of course uh, there are some of the uh, some of the issues uh, you know mentioned from this from this group is capacity building learning from each other networking um, uh, could really help to ex to have access to the climate finance and uh, uh, some of them mentioned that institutional policy and uh, uh, you know strategy and their capacity uh, that would really help to have access to uh, climate finance and I think I think we're, we're ten minutes over, uh, so I think we need to close quite quick. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But just just one minute. My last point, uh, you know, before before I finish, uh, you know, I mean, there are two questions that came from um, um, uh, from the uh, you know chat box. Um, one question was regarding you know CBF um, uh, whether CBF is um, is supporting you know at the local level, urban level, or national level. In fact. You know, under the climate change window, we are supporting our urban level, and but uh, under the emergency response window, we are supporting at the national level. In fact, you know, beyond these five locations. And uh, you know, uh, with this, I would I would appreciate the organization. I would be I would be really thankful to uh, you know my colleague at uh, at BRAC um, IT division who is uh, who is helping here, and and all other relevant colleagues who is who helped us to design plan and organize this session thank you so much barry if you have any point to uh, close this no just to say thank you very much to everybody thank you for uh, those of who have stayed to the end i uh, appreciate it's run over uh, and thanks for all the contributions and uh, we'll get the key messages out as soon as we can